Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard. Happy Easter to everyone. I hope you had or having a wonderful Easter on this April 4th. Today, we have a very nice and very warm, loving show this evening. We're going to be speaking to a beautiful young lady who is a singing superstar. As you see on your monitor, she is singing uh, multiple songs such as Crudo, Obsessions. Uh, I mean, it's a long list of some songs. And she's also been nominated for Grammy. She's also lent her wonderful music to video games. And, you know, when you get me on video games, talk about video games, you got me, ladies and gentlemen. And she's on a show tonight, Mrs. Ali Stone. But before we meet her, the Sherrard Show is brought to you by Essence Television, ladies and gentlemen. See all the best episodes of your life on the Essence Television Network. You can always just add it to your Roku and you can see episodes such as Stevie Wonder. You can see all of the Isley Brothers, Manhattans, um, also the Supremes, as well as this wonderful episode, ladies and gentlemen, featuring Ali Stone is going to be on Essence Television. And then it's also brought to you by iHeartRadio. So if you ever missed the episodes on Essence Television, you can also listen to them on iHeartRadio. Just go right to iHeartRadio on your monitor, or you can add it um, on your smart device as well as your television and listen to the best episodes of your life. Well, um, it's very special to have brilliant, beautiful, talented individuals on the show. Although this young lady looks like she's about 15 years old, she has been nominated for a Grammy. She has also, again, lending her voice as well as her music to video games. She's also a producer. Can you believe that? When I was 15 years old, I wasn't producing anything but messes, but she's here producing great music and doing wonderful things. And her first time on a Gerard show on our special Sunday conversation entitled planning your moves while finding your groove. Welcome, Ali, how are you? Good, I'm, I'm happy to be here with you and I'm happy to share with all of the people at the Sherard Show about my music, my work, and of course, all the love that we share for video games. I think that's, that's a great plus. <laughs> That's an absolute great plus. But first and foremost, you are so talented and so gifted. First of all, when did you start or what was the um, inspiration behind you starting in music? I feel that I got inspired around music like since a very young age um, because I actually began to study classical piano when I was four back in Colombia, where I'm originally from. And then from there, it was kind of like a huge snowball that began to grow because I started to study the flute, then guitar, then I, I taught, I took solfege classes and like music theory, harmony, uh, kind of like developing my ear, then even playing like drums, bass, it was kind of like extending like my horizon along like very different genres. And of course, listening like to the music in Colombia in that moment. And then um, when I was around uh, 18, 20, like after I graduated high school and began in, studying in university, that's when I began to do all the music production stuff. And it started out as my hobby actually. And I went to business school and it was my hobby in between classes to, to produce music. And then um, I won a Disney competition to make a song for Monsters University. And that's when my hobby became my actual career. Wow. Now, um, what did it feel like being um, um, nominated to be able to first get a Grammy and then also to be able to uh, do a soundtrack for Disney? That that was amazing, actually. And uh, well, going to the Disney project, I think that's the one that really ignited my career. And it was also like a very interesting experience in which I got to make music for TV, basically, for the first time. And I got to show Disney and Pixar and, and the judges who were the DJs from Swedish House Mafia um, my talent, basically, because it was held online. It was open for anybody in the world. So I love that it was accessible to me, like being back in Colombia and, and like basically starting out in, in the production world. I got to participate in this and, and it basically yeah started my career that happened in in 2013. And the Grammy nomination was actually um, this year, in, in this year's Grammy, that I got to work uh, with the artist Kami on her album Monstruo. It was nominated on the Best Latin Alternative Album category. Uh, but yeah, that was amazing. And when it got nominated, I was so excited. Um, I also felt like super grateful to be part of it, um, to know yeah that, that such a piece of 
album of artwork was uh, being recognized by the Academy. Now, um, if you've done all this at 15, what do you think 16 is going to hold for you? Okay, all right, I'm just cheeky, <laughs> wonderful young lady. Now, um, when it comes to video games now, there are so many things we can talk about in terms of video games. First of all, you just acknowledge you have a great love for video games, correct? Yeah, yeah, I actually, even I had my first PlayStation when I was, I think I was like five or six. Yeah, like back in the 90s, like the first one ever that opened like with the... Um, with the great with the CD flap uh, over the CD, CD exactly. flap, right? Yeah, and then yeah, that was like my first one, and then yeah, then I had the Wii too. But um, even I retook video gaming like during the pandemic because it was like okay, I'm here <laughs> in my apartment, like I have more free time free time than I thought, so I'm gonna start playing video games on my computer. So now tell us a little bit about the game that you've lent your music to. You said it was a survival horror game. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a horror game. It's called a Return. Um, it's spelled Re, um, two points, and then Turn. And it's um, like a thriller, kind of like... It, I love that it's also um, a video game where the main character is a, is a woman. And she's like super empowering. So I love that. And yeah, it's basically a thriller, suspense, um, horror video game. So I had a lot of fun making the music. It's actually instrumental music. Um, but yeah, it has like this kind of like uh, attention that makes you feel like, yeah, something wrong is going to happen <laughs> in the in the storyline. And mm -hmm. uh, it was super fun. I was actually approached by David Bergantino, who is the producer and writer of the video game. Um, like some years ago, he told me about the video game and that he wanted to bring me on board. And I said, yeah, I love it. I love horror too. Like when I've done also music for film and TV, I've done mainly for horror films and I love watching horror movies. So it was like, yeah, like take me in. I, I'd love to produce music for this uh, video game. And then, um, yeah, the project started to become bigger and everything. And he told me like, yeah, we're ready like to go into the musicalization part. And he sent me, yeah, like the brief and kind of like shots of the video game so that I could imagine um, like the music around it. And there was like this main sound that, that they wanted me to include, which was um, a train horn basically, which is like the main setting of the, of the video game. It happens in a train. So they wanted me like to bring like the train whistle along the song and yeah like when you listen to the music you find the train whistle as a key part of like a, as a motive because it repeats like this kind of like tension that something bad's gonna happen basically so now what's the story of the video game she's on a train and somebody's stalking her on a train or what and yeah she's in a train and basically um all her friends disappear um and it's kind of like she has to bring them back but then like as she uh, follows the um, like the storyline and kind of like this heroic um, path she finds that it's kind of like uh, there's no return from like this um, uh, endeavor that she's getting into so that's why the the video game is also called return because it's kind of like there's no turn and no like return of like this endless train basically that's a beautiful thing. Boy, you can't beat a good survival horror game. Um, we're going to talk more about that in a moment. But for you all who just joined us, we're talking to the lovely singing sensation, multi-talented Ali Stone on the Sherrard Show. We will be taking your, your uh, questions momentarily um, to this lovely young lady. She will be ready for those shortly. Now, Ali, how do you keep yourself abreast with being able to play uh, multiple instruments? How do you keep yourself sharp with that? I am a guitar player and I'm as well a piano player. But when you talk about the flute and all these other things, how do you keep yourself abreast in terms of um, playing, playing all those instruments? Yeah, I, I feel it's mostly about um, like the discipline and, and like the practice. Like I still practice like every day, like all the instruments. And it's kind of like, um, I feel it's like going to the gym. Like if you stop doing something, then like you kind of like stop, start losing like the ability to play it like, more easily I would say because in the end like the knowledge like 
I already have it there because I, I started it like since I was little and kind of like cultivating it and everything. But like if you if you stop practicing, then like I don't know, your fingers become like more tight or something. So I I'm always trying to practice and kind of like yeah, even like the songs that I learned when I was like little, like even in piano that I would learn like a lot of like Disney songs and it was kind of like my way of warming up and practicing like I still do that just to keep like my mind fresh and kind of like always staying active in in that sense and yeah like always finding that time like to play yeah piano guitar bass drums and even now um here in LA during the pandemic especially I started playing a lot of Indian instruments so like sitar and swarzangam and like tumbi like I just practice them because they also have like a very different way of playing Western instruments. So yeah, it's kind of like, like doing exercises, but, but instead of like uh, doing physical exercise, I, I just like work my mind and, and my fingers basically, and my ears, of course. You know, um, we had Marty on the uh, Sherrod show about a month ago. She's an extremely talented young lady that's doing great things in Colombia. She's a Colombian superstar as well. Now, what is it like being um, a Colombian singer um, in that wonderful country? Uh, it's it's uh, amazing to, to do music coming from Colombia, actually, because Colombia is such a like, rich and diverse country um, musically. Um, yeah, and even like people can see it like in talents that have come out from Colombia, like Shakira or like Juanes that have even like music that sounds super different, like from each other. And that's because, yeah, Colombia has all these like sounds, colors, like all these flavors that um, characterize so much the diversity of our culture. So I feel even like harnessing all of those sounds from Colombia is a blessing actually, because even now that I live here in Los Angeles, I get to mix so many sounds of like the American music, like the general market, but with the Colombian touch that I bring. So even in terms of making music like more danceable, for example, or like even bringing some folkloric Andean sounds, like I already bring that kind of like in my blood. So I know how to kind of like execute how to make something like even if I need to add salsa or bolero or like reggaeton, like I already kind of like know with my fingertips, like, oh yeah, we need to add this or that, or even how to sing something to sound more, for example, more Caribbean, that it has like a, a very special um, tone with the, even with the accent in Spanish. So it's like, I already have like my ear trained uh, in that way. And I feel it's a blessing that in Colombia, like we get like this kind of like formation culturally, like in, in music. You know, um, it's amazing that if you look at your mind, ladies and gentlemen, she has a lot of dance tunes. She has romance songs. There's some of the nicest music videos that make you feel good. And a lot of them are um, Spanish and a lot of them are in English. And now is that easy um, or is it difficult when you're translating a song or singing a song in Spanish and then singing it in English as well? Um, I feel like uh, there's like, um, like an enchanting thing about making music in Spanish that it's like the vocabulary is super like ample. So like we have many ways of saying one thing, like for example, um, in English, I love you is I love you. But like in Spanish, we have like te quiero, te amo, te adoro, like so many ways of expressing that same feeling. So I feel even like for in songs, for example, we can play a lot with words um, to express that. Uh, but also like in terms of like translating, for example, a, a song from English to Spanish, it becomes harder because since we have like so many words to say a short thing in English, when we have to translate something from like even Spanish to English or vice versa, it's like tricky because you have to find like the right combination of words so that it fits also like the phrasing of the song and that it has like kind of like that same sound even in the vowels so that like the translation doesn't sound like a different song but it sounds like something cohesive that you could say like oh yeah like the English version sounds like this too um so yeah it has like its technique and 
And it's more about kind of like developing that way of like um, practicing to write lyrics in like an extensive way or like a short way, like to find a way of like saying something like straight to the point or like saying it like with more like adornations and kind of like more like makeup basically. We're getting a Spanish lesson tonight, ladies and gentlemen, learning how yeah. to say the proper words um, in English and play on words as well. It's such a beautiful language. How many languages do you speak besides I Spanish and English? Speak, I, I speak four. So yeah, I speak um, Spanish, English, French, and Portuguese. Oh, wow. I just speak English and jive. Hey, man, what's <laughs> happening? That's, that's about it. Love well, it. ladies and gentlemen, we are speaking to the wonderful Ali Stone about her illustrious career. I cannot believe she is so young and so talented, so beautiful, loves video games, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. And she has also been nominated for a Grammy. She's also produced uh, music for Disney. So many things, and she's only 15 years old. I am so floored by that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, also, um, one thing that's interesting about you as well is that you also are a producer. Mm -hmm. So you also produce other artists and you're about uh, in women empowerment. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I, I actually began producing yeah, in 2013, which is the moment when I also won the Disney competition. And yeah, for those of you who are connected that maybe don't know about like what producing is, it's um, basically bringing the song into reality. It's the, the moment where like, uh, for example, the producer or like the main director of the song or like the project decides like we have to have uh, some guitar here maybe drums come in here the bass uh, then the vocalist can do this that and yeah it's basically that stage moment where um, yeah the different elements of the song become into existence and a song is born basically and um, yeah, I've been doing this not only for my own music, which I, I have been producing since I started my artist project, but also for other artists uh, from the general market, from the Latin market. And that's also like what, what I do, like for video games, for TV, for ads even. And um, it's been a great experience, especially also as a, as a woman doing the music production because as, as you were mentioning, I've been always like super vocal about uh, female empowerment and like gender equality and female inclusion, especially in, in music production. I've seen it's like a very male dominated um, job where like even there was a, a USC study where they showed that only like 2% of producers in, in like the main charts of Billboard were men, were women, sorry. So yeah, it shows like, yeah, 98% of the producers showcase there are men and even in engineering, 3% are women uh, in songwriting, like around 14% are, are women. So yeah, it shows you there's still like a huge gap of like female participation and female inclusion. So I've been super vocal with it uh, and along with organizations like She is the Music and Women Working for Women, because I feel like there's a lot of like work that has to be done so that women are taken into account more in this and, and not only like being in the same conversation, but actually being in the same, the same table. So getting paid the same fees that men counterparts get paid and so on. Now, um, when it comes to producing, is it a lot of hard work when you have to orchestrate the guitars for them to sound a certain way and then you have to do the piano player and then all these personalities and instruments to orchestrate? Is that a difficult job? Um, I, I feel it's a job about like attention and taste and also, yeah, like kind of like having that discernation of knowing where to put something like not abusing the, the power of bringing different elements and putting a lot of information at once. So yeah, I think it's attention to detail, like to also listen to a lot of music, like to know your craft and even, for example, being a musician myself, I think it's super useful because I already know like, oh, a, a bass player is supposed to sound like this, the guitar can play this or the piano and I can, even for example, in the demoing of the song, when I build like the demo of the production, I can get to play all the instruments and have a like a clear idea of like, this is supposed to sound like this. So I feel, yeah, 
that's a great element that uh, thankfully, yeah, I got to study those instruments before starting music production. Uh, but even there's a lot of producers then that, that don't mm, play instruments per se. But uh, again, they have like great taste in saying like, oh, maybe this part should be more minimalistic and maybe we should leave the vocalist uh, have like the main moment, maybe accompanied with a few elements. Uh, but knowing like when's the right time to put some sounds, when when's the right time to blend the mix and kind of like, um, yeah, have all of the instruments and all of the sounds playing a key part in the song. Like if it's not necessary, then it can go out basically. Now, do you play in front of, when you are on tour, do you play in front of a live band? I actually, um, I play everything in, in the show. So I all like usually my, my show is like a one girl band live show where I'm DJing, but then I'm also playing guitar, playing drums singing and I'm kind of like playing like how the session develops in my studio but like in front of people like in on, on a stage so yeah like some people usually like say it's kind of like the orchestra girl because <laughs> I'm playing like all of the instruments by myself and and it's usually like kind of like um circular uh, stage that I like to have so that uh, I can actually go like from the bass or like the drums or like the keys to like the dj rack where i'm like punching all the songs and all the stems basically um and yeah and it's easy to navigate to basically try doing that at home ladies and gentlemen this young lady is so <laughs> incredibly talented take it from a man who plays the guitar as well as the piano um but she goes takes it further playing the fruit playing the flute the drums uh, the synthesizer as well as the other one. She is so talented. It's unbelievable. Ali, where can we purchase your music and what do you have upcoming? Well, um, my music, you can find it all um, in, in platforms as Ali Stone, A-L-I and S-T-O-N-E. That's my artist name. Or you can look me up uh, in my webpage, alistonemusic.com. And I have all the links to all the platforms, to Tidal, Spotify, Apple Music, to YouTube as well, so that you can watch my videos. And you can also watch even in my webpage the music that I've done for other people. So if you go to credits, you'll find uh, my work for like Mary J. Blige and like Disney for Latin artists as well. And well, this year I'm preparing new music that I'm going to release very, very soon. There's some electronic driven songs uh, that have like this kind of like sounds like uh, obsessions and oculto that are a little bit more into the deep sound uh, but there's also a lot of collaborations that I'm bringing in this year uh, so I'm excited for you guys to hear that because usually most of my music has been like just by myself and singing and doing everything so in this one I'm having a lot of featured artists so so that's gonna be fun and also uh, some music that I'm producing for other upcoming artists this year there's one that I'm super excited about uh, for this girl called Nicole Faure, um, that it's actually a, an R&B pop song that I produced for her. And it has also like this vibe of like 90s music. So um, yeah, I'm excited for you guys to listen to that. And it's coming out very, very soon. So if you follow me on socials, you'll be like seeing like all of these releases like on my posts and stories and everything. Check her out. Um, you're for her. Her social media handles are on below on the screen, ladies and gentlemen. You can go ahead and uh, follow her. Make sure you check out her music as well as her uh, music videos. Her music is just is just unbelievable, and you just love to hear the sound. It makes you want to dance. It makes you want to be romantic. All of these things is just absolutely wonderful. Um, and this young girl is so young. She's so gifted and talented. You're such a breath of fresh air when it comes Thanks. to music, young lady. And I'll tell you why. Because you are a true musician and a true artist. Many Thanks. times we use that word, but it's used kind of um, watered down because a lot of the individuals are hiding behind things in the, in the, in the um, studio, mm -hmm. the, the instrumentation in the studio, but you actually have taken time to learn these instruments and you're actually doing everything hands-on. How does your mom and dad feel about that? Uh, they, they've been actually always super encouraging and, and very supportive. And I've always appreciated that. Um, like even since I was little, um, when I started playing piano, it was actually because I, I saw this girl playing in my 
preschool um and it was like in, in this talent show that was in my preschool and it was like oh that's beautiful i want to play that too and i asked my mom like hi can you put me in in piano classes and she was like yeah of course and she looked for the piano teacher and everything like everything that i told her like i want to learn this instrument or that um my mom and my dad were always super encouraging and supportive and even when I began with my musical career and DJing and everything, all of my family would go to my shows, like even if they were like at 3 a.m. And even when I was opening for Justin Bieber, like all of my family was watching me there. So I feel like that's a blessing because basically when you're starting out, your family are your first fans. And knowing that at least like your family supports you is like a huge relief basically like saying like okay i'm i'm not doing something crazy and yeah i've always felt like their love and and it means a lot to me because it it like their support has taken me to where i am too you know ali I mean, it's amazing that you're doing such wonderful things you know um where would somebody like me be able to reach out to you because i need you to produce my doo-wop album i want you to i'm bringing oh, back the doo-wop and i need your help and bring it back to doo up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take your questions now for the lovely Ali Stone. Uh, this question, now this question is from Madeline. This is from Madeline. She's all the way in Wisconsin. She says she is absolutely a fan. It's an honor that Sherrod has you on his show. She loves you to mm -hmm. death and you're all about women empowerment. Her question to you is, what is the great, what is the greatest accomplishment you feel in a, in the music industry? And what is one of the things that you look to accomplish in your young career? Hmm. I feel uh, in terms of accomplishments, like I feel I've had different like stepping stones that I cherish so much. And like, I kind of like embrace everything that has happened because yeah, going from, for example, the Disney contest to like opening, for example, for Justin Bieber, that actually gave me the visa to work here in the US. And even then, working for Mary J, then getting the Grammy nomination. It's like all of these little things that keep on building my career. But also I, I feel like it's such an accomplishment to even get people to listen to my music and feel connected. Like I feel like that's the most gratifying thing, especially as a music creator, because that's when you realize like all of this like sweat and effort and like creativity that you put into making a song, it's connecting with somebody else. And I feel like that's the greatest thing. Like, even if it's just one person, it's like, I did my job here because like this person got to feel what I was feeling when I was creating this song. So I feel that uh, when people get to listen to my music, I feel like this is amazing. Like I embrace that moment, like always. Beautiful, beautiful. We thank you for your question, Madeline. This is from George Ann. This is from George Ann. She is in Utah. Her question is, first of all, she says she loves your music. You're absolutely fabulous and stunning to look at and so young. Congratulations on your Grammy nomination, as well as all your other accomplishments. Her question is, um, do you ever concern or worry about just about burnout with all of the things you have going on? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I have gone through that. And I think like all of the creative people maybe go through that kind of like, um, I don't know if it's like a, a burnout of like uh, maybe inspiration that sometimes happens. Um, but what I've always tried to do, it's kind of like if, if I'm feeling like that or like if I'm feeling stuck or like I'm working so much that I'm losing like this kind of like main drive that makes me make music. I just try to like take a, a break and it's like, I'll do, I don't know, like something else, like even to relax my mind. And for example, last year- um, um, I'll, Video games, that relaxes yeah, everybody. Exactly. <laughs> video games. exactly, yeah, like even last year when the pandemic started, I feel that I had like that kind of like feeling, but it was like weird because it was not that I was doing like so much, but it, like the opposite that I was kind of like stuck in like, I don't know what to do. And like, there are no shows, like no things are happening in music basically. Um, but it was like kind of like that burnout, like my inspiration was gone. Um, so I decided to start playing video games in my computer. It was like, okay, yeah, I'll start playing video games. Then I enrolled in classes, uh, in yeah, online classes of like uh, paleontology and like psychology. It was like, yeah, like I just want to relax my mind, but also like stay 
like busy kind of like working my mind out like not kind of like not doing anything so i began to do this like all these different things like reading more books and, and such and it was kind of like a way to reactivate my inspiration. So I feel like all of the creative people, if we ever go with that, it's very important like to let the mind rest a little bit and kind of like recharge energy. And even, uh, I don't know, for example, now that, uh, yeah, we can go out and walk well with the mask and everything, but even like admiring nature, walking, seeing like the sunset, like those little things mean so much like to recharge your soul basically and even i don't know if you guys have watched the movie soul um that disney released but it's basically about that like all the little things that like make your soul move basically and like find your groove so i i feel like that's the main thing very good we really appreciate that georgia georgia and your question as well as your answer ali we'll take the last question this is from alan fairly he's from moss point mississippi he said he absolutely loves um your your flavor as what you're doing in the industry is very inspirational in him he said your music has also helped him how to learn to dance oh wow that's great <laughs> but alan has asked question is list the three your three favorite survival horror games oh wow well, there's actually um, one that I loved when I was little um, called uh, Heart of Darkness, that it was actually based on a book. It was super scary, I remember, <laughs> like super scary and hard to play, but I would always play it again because it was kind of like, yeah, like addictive in a sense. Um, Return, of course, which is the, the game where I put my own music. Um, I recommend it for all of you guys so go go check it out because it's very very cool i know i'm gonna check it out look at the monitor ladies and gentlemen i know i'm gonna check it out and um the third one i think uh well there's actually like two that i would put in that third third place um there's one called uh rayman that has it's like a very old video game um but uh it had like this moments of like like a uh, happy place but then it became like a horror kind of like video game of uh saving your life i i don't know if like rayman is still like out there and there was one uh that was actually inspired uh, i'm trying to think about the name because it was one of like the ones i played on playstation one um but it's inspired on the lord of the flies actually and uh yeah it has like even like these super scary pigs and everything it, like that's a great video game and like the main character has a pink hair I, i'm trying to remember the name because i used to play that a lot and yeah like i remember the pigs being like super scary oh wow she, definitely check those games out she's listening to some that are very familiar to me and they're great games i'm always a junkie for a great survival horror game silent hill resident evil clock uh, tower um, um, Heart of Darkness. Um, there's one way back in the PlayStation called D. There's so many that goes on. It's just a lot, but we thank you all for your questions. Um, if you have any more questions, you can always hit Allie up with her, her email address. Information is right on your monitor. She'd love to answer your questions. A very, very polite young lady. Well, Ali, I have a special request. I would like, before we close out, can you sing or give us 30 seconds of something that is coming out or that's already out, we can look forward to on the Sherrard Show. Of course, yeah, let me sing you a little bit of crudo. Así que tócame despacio Que este amor que te tengo es tan crudo Trátalo con cuidado Llegarme despacio Que el amor que te tengo es tan crudo No dejes que se yeah, so that's oh, the purpose of crudo. <laughs> I don't know what she was saying, but I know it sounds beautiful. Thank you so oh, much, Ali. We really appreciate you stopping by and taking time out on this Easter Sunday for our Sunday conversation with Ali Stone. Definitely support her music. Get it and get that video game because I'm going to go out and get it tomorrow right away because I want to be the one to talk about return as well. Also, the Sherrod Show was brought to you by my non for profit for those who are suffering from lupus as well. You can always donate and support on the Sharp Minded Cultural Center. It is on your screen to be able to, to donate and support the cause for those who are fighting 
autoimmune diseases like I. But also, ladies and gentlemen, on our next episode of the Sherrard Show, we have a very special guest who may be joining us as well. You don't want to miss it. In the meantime, tune into Essence Television, subscribe to our newsletter, and we'll see you next episode. Enjoy your Easter. Bye-bye now. Thank you, Ali. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to the Show.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube videos, subscribe to our newsletter at Essence Television Networks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrod, you can email him at the Show.com. Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.